Hello Clover developers, let's talk about how combining the Clover hosted iframe with an e-commerce SDK enables you to build fully featured secure payment experiences on your website. In this tutorial, we'll go over how to use Clover's e-commerce SDK to take secure payments from a form that creates a credit card token that we can pass to the V1 charges endpoint. We'll go over how to make the call in either Postman or by way of a function that uses that credit card token as a parameter. To get from nothing to e-commerce site, we'll follow the flow depicted here. Clover uses OAuth to make all API calls, including the required PackMS key endpoint for e-com. Once you have your PackMS key, we'll set up the iframe and then call the V1 charges endpoint. Please keep note that card tokens expire after 10 minutes. To accommodate tokens that will be used repeatedly, you can save it under a customer. In addition to your digital keys, Clover e-com APIs require a local server to avoid exposing digital keys to the web. In this tutorial, we'll be using Node.js and Express to run our iframe. Check the description box for links to Clover Docs and additional files used in this tutorial for reference. Let's jump into the tutorial. Using the GitHub repo link in the description, we can copy the JSON data required for the related ecom iframe endpoints. Once copied, we'll import to Postman Update the bearer OAuth token and save. Click on the PackMS key endpoint on the left and verify that the authorization type is bearer token and send the request. If you get a 401 unauthorized, this usually has to do with an incorrect or misspelled OAuth token. And in this case, the OAuth token parameter doesn't match the one set on import. So we'll update the correct OAuth token in our sandbox environment to reflect the current app we're working with. Save your changes once pasted, and then we can send over our request. And now you've obtained your API access key, also called a PackMS key used for card tokenization. Using the GitHub repo link in the description, let's download the Clover hosted iframe for third-party developers zip folder. On download, Unzip, and then using your IDE of choice, let's open the folder. Upon opening the folder, we see our Express.js file, which will be used by the back end to generate the web page. In public is our style sheet. And finally, in routes, we have our index.js file that will connect to the v1 charges endpoint. Now, assuming you have installed Node.js and Express already, we should be able to use npm start to get started with what we already have. However, considering that we did not start this directory within our terminal, we downloaded it, we might be missing some modules. So in this case, what we can do is use npm install, request, and save it. Now, if we start, we should be able to open up our local host and see that we are getting all of the correct files from the right source. Okay, so let's get started with our form. I created a form with the ID payment form and then set up the rows. Then each card field requires its own div and an input errors class. So we can provide validation on possible input errors in real time. Repeat for each field card number, card date, card CVV, and card postal code. Then create space for the card response. And then also create space for the button container as well. Time to save and check our progress and verify we have four rows for each field. 
Configure the Clover Ecom SDK by linking the Checkout SDK in the header. Initialize an instance of Clover by passing in our PackMS or API key, and then create an Elements instance. Create each card field and map. Once refreshed, see each element now initialized. Next, get the card response, as well as the button element, as well as each input error element to display the messages for each field in our payment form upon input and validation error. Use change and blur event listeners to trigger the error messages. Anytime the field is edited, the change event will trigger an output to the console or also in the event the user clicks away from the box, leaving it empty. Notice backticks versus quotations here because the string contains placeholders for the information relevant to the event that just occurred. This is for testing purposes and might not be necessary in production if you're already displaying input errors on the form to the user using inrange HTML, for example. Verify event listeners are working as they should and repeat three more times for each card field. Now that we've verified each field is working correctly and can check for valid input errors, let's create a card token. Get the form ID element and add a submit event listener, but prevent the default action. A promise object is expected from this create token function, so we can chain on the then method in the case the task is completed. If anything goes wrong while processing our request for a token, the catch method receives the error that occurred. If there are errors, check for each one and print. Otherwise, we'll await for the promise to settle and finally alert the token, or as we move forward, use it as the parameter for our create charge function. If we're just testing in Sandbox, let's copy that token over to Postman to use in our V1 charges endpoint. A successful status is what we want to see, but we can also verify on the developer dashboard under transactions that the charge was posted. Finally, we'll set up the iframe as if we're in production. Comment out the token alert and add the call to the create charge function that will use the card token as a parameter. Create the function and use the payload from Postman as a reference to include the JSON property that contains the data you want to send using the fetch method. Since this tutorial is using JavaScript to make the API call, we can use stringify to make a string of the token object. And again, letting the function know to alert us of the response if the promise is fulfilled or print any errors caught. The index.js file is the real money maker here, literally because this is where we make the charge call and post it. So as mentioned in the beginning, we're going to post a charge from the merchant server to the Clover server using the v1 charges endpoint and we'll authorize this by using our OAuth or bearer token. Now let's see it in action and check our transactions to close out this tutorial.
and with a successful payment. We thank you for watching. Please comment below or email us if you have any questions. We look forward to seeing what you build.